cabarete. If you're a kiter, you already know what I'm talking about. Caribbean chill, steady thermal winds, and a kite community that will forever be considered one of the originals. The adventure sports capital of the Dominican Republic, cabarete is a kiteboarding hotspot that everyone should experience. My name is Crystal Vaness. Welcome to Destinations. While it's a hot spot in the kiteboarding community, Cabarete is still very much an adventurous destination. There's only one all-inclusive resort in town, but there's a huge ocean playground to explore and a jungle. This is a place to go for adventure lovers. What's really special about this place is how the local riders and the foreign visitors come together to lay it all out on the water. When I first learned to kiteboard, I knew that if progression was my goal, Cabarete was the place to be. And this is a spot that was frequented by pro riders like Aaron Hadlow, Tom Court, and Susie Mai. So let's talk about the kite spot and then we'll go over everything else you need to know before you go. How to get here, where to stay, what to do, what to eat, where to play. Windy season in Cabarete. There are two seasons. You've got summer and winter. Summer season is about April to September with the most windy days being in the middle of that period. Summers in Cabarete are hard to beat. I've had so many perfect 9 meter sessions here. Now winter season here, it goes from about December to March and the winds are a little lighter, but the waves are amazing. All I hear from my surfer buddies in winter is how many barrels they're getting. So if you're into waves and you're okay with lighter winds, bring your bigger kites or your directional board and come and enjoy some warm weather in the winter. Quick heads up, this place is pretty busy most of the time, but the holiday season is hectic. So if you don't like crowds, maybe plan around that. So it's pretty much summer all year round in Cabarete. Uh, there's a couple of rainy months, October and November, but the rest of the year you will be chilling in board shorts and bikinis like it's your job. And better news, the water is so warm you will never need a wetsuit here. Now, this place is known for afternoon thermal winds, so your mornings are free for basically anything. You can go surfing, sub surfing, hiking, just chill on the beach, drink some coconuts, recover from your hangover, because this place can definitely be a party town if you want it to be. All right, launch spots. So there's a couple of great beaches here, uh, and there's two main ones that we'll focus on today. Cabarete Bay, also known as Bozo Beach, and Kite Beach. Now, most visitors pick their side of the tracks and stick to it, but I recommend riding a couple sessions in both spots and just pick which one you like the best. Cabarete Bay has a huge beach and even more space on the water, but it's ocean chop, so the, the chop is a bit bigger and harder to manage, and there's some nice, clean waves way out on the reef. Whereas Kite Beach, you've got a reef break that's much closer, so this chop is much smaller and easier to manage, but the beach can be quite small, especially in the summer. Riding level is all over the map here. This place is very beginner friendly, both for the budget and for the conditions. It's not an insanely easy spot, but the challenges you learn to overcome here will serve you well in other spots. Learning how to manage a shore break and ocean chop is a valuable skill for any kiteboarder. Now, if you really want to send it, you'll be stoked to see some professional riders here and local riders that could go trick for trick with any of the pros if given the chance. Whatever your riding style, you will be able to have some dreamy sessions here in Cabarete. Foiling, freestyle, big air, directional, and on the windiest of windy days, grab a rum punch, kick back, and watch the show go down at Kite Beach. Freestylers will love La Boca. It's a flat water river mouth about 10 minutes out of town, and directional riders will be drooling over the waves at Encuentro. It is perfect for a strapless session. Because kiteboarding has been a quintessential part of Cabarete's growth for the last several years, this place is a prime setup for kiters. So that means that all of the kite schools and hotels are set up well for anyone that wants to come and play. Most of the kite schools and beachfront hotels have shower and storage facilities, places to chill and watch the action go down on the water. Kiteboarding is a way of life in Cabarete. Now what to watch out for in Cabarete? The spot can get very busy, so take a moment to observe how the spot works before you get in the water. Down at Kite Beach, there's a very interesting blend of learners and pro riders riding in the shore break. So if you're not really into crowds and don't want to navigate that, bit of action, I would recommend sessioning further out or right up in Cabarete Bay. Any rider that spends some serious time kiting in Cabarete will see a noticeable progression in their riding. This will always be one of my favorite kite spots and anytime I think of Caribbean vibes, this is what comes to mind. For more information on this kite spot, there is a detailed spot guide linked in the description of this video. Now, let's talk about everything else there is to know about Cabarete, starting with how you get here. 
So there's three decent airports to fly into. There's Puerto Plata, about 30 minutes away. Santiago de los Caballeros, which is about 90 minutes away. And then Santo Domingo, which is uh, probably the cheapest one to fly into, but is about four hours. Now, taxis in Cabarete are a little bit more expensive than you would think. So whichever airport you fly into, expect anywhere from $35 to $200 for your taxi. If you're coming into Santo Domingo, you can get a bus for about $10. So if you've got a bit of time and feeling a bit adventurous, try taking the local bus. While you're in Cabarete, you can rent a car if you wish. If you want to go on some excursions and check out more faraway kite spots, this is the best way to do that. But if you're staying in one of the beachfront hotels or in town, you could probably just get around on foot or taking the local transport options like motoconchos or guaguas. While you're in Cabarete, you pretty much can get around anywhere on foot or taking the local transportation options like motoconchos and guaguas. But if you're wanting to do sessions outside of town and check out some of the other spots, I would rent a car. Accommodation-wise, Cabarete is another spot where you can go as luxe or as laid back as you want. Anything from beachfront boutique hotels like Natura Cabana, kite beach hotels and apartments, uh, local apartments and hostels in the back streets. You have every option you can imagine here. Pricing-wise, hostels are about $12 to $15 a night for a bunk bed and a dorm room. If you're staying for a long time, you can find apartments for well under $500 US a month. What to eat and drink in Cabarete? The food is definitely much cheaper here than it is in North America, but not too cheap. So watch your pesos. Dining out every day can add up quickly. If you have access to a kitchen, you may want to check out one of the local grocery stores and markets. There's lots of fresh food options here. If you want to eat like the locals, fried plantains, rice, and stewed or grilled meat is the usual here. Here in Cabarete, there are restaurant options of all kinds, from healthy spots like Vitamin D Cafe to pizza houses like Pizza and Spaghetti. That's one of my favorites. Um, you could go to amazing coffee shops, waffle houses, Italian food, catch of the day seafood on the beach, anything you want you can find here in Cabarete. Now you will have to decide for yourself which post kite beer you prefer, is it Presidente or Bohemia? And don't forget that the Dominican Republic is known for its rum, so make sure you try that while you're here. Adventure is everywhere you look in Cabarete, so do not forget to get off the beach and get back into the jungle. Whether you're going on an organized tour or renting a car and checking it out for yourself, there is so much to see here beyond the beach. If you're looking for a kite adventure, check in with Dare to Fly. They organize some amazing kite trips to well off the beaten path spots like Buen Hombre. So if the slow pace is your scene, Cabarete has some great options for yoga classes, massage therapy, spa days. But if you're looking for something a little different, look into the trapeze classes, waterfall hikes, ATV and dirt bike adventures. Some of my favorite things to do. Horseback riding in the jungle is an amazing getaway from the beach. And of course, surf life in Encuentro. When the wind isn't working here, there is no better way to spend time on the water than in the waves. There is truly no shortage of things to do here in the Dominican Republic. But if I'm completely honest, I spent most of my time kicking at a kite beach because it's hard to walk away from great wind or the hope of great wind when all you can think about is kiteboarding. Cabarete will always feel like a home to me. This is a place I really grew as a kiteboarder. And most importantly, it's where I learned what the kiteboarding lifestyle and community is all about. From doing the walk of shame every day up the beach for the first month I was here to being able to hold it down at any kite spot in the Dominican Republic, this is one of the best spots I've ever been to and I will always look forward to my next trip back. So I hope to see you out on the water in Cabarete very soon. So we've included links to a detailed spot guide and a travel guide in the description of this video. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and of course leave a comment if you have any questions. Do not hesitate to reach out to me on social media. I'd be happy to help you plan your trip out here. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time on Destinations.